Howdy, Larkin Rose here, and I'm going to inflict upon myself some babblings of a demented old sociopathic control freak. Um, I want to give my analysis of the whatever speech by Joe Biden. This is the first speech he gave as president-elect. Um, because, and by the way, I haven't seen this yet. I haven't inflicted it on myself yet. Um, but I don't need to. I'm going to do this in parts and just pause it when it needs commentary. The first thing I have to give a commentary on, because I already see people saying it, is he's going to bring us together. No, he's not! He's a politician. Politics is never about bringing us together. It is about using the force of law to violently rob and control run group for the benefit of another group. There is no such thing as politics bringing us together. And I wish people would think enough to realize that there can't be that. A politician who brought us together would do so by not being a politician, not running for office, not passing any legislation, not taxing or regulating anything or anyone. So there, I already had a tantrum before I even started. So uh, I'm sure I'm going to interrupt him a lot and I'll try to avoid throwing up on my expensive keyboard while listening to this uh, babbling, demented psycho. And by the way, please don't assume that I think Trump was good because I'm bashing this idiot. But invariably, when I bash one power-happy twit, the supporters of that twit will think I must like the other twit. And no, I just bashed Trump for four years in a row for being this psychotic authoritarian he is. No, I'm going to do the same thing to Biden. Let's begin. <laughs> Fellow Americans. Okay, I'm going to have to point out the propaganda and the psychology in addition to this, the things they lie about. My fellow Americans, no, this is a ruling class and you are the subject. And when they talk to you as if, we're all the same, really? Why is it that you can steal our money and we can't steal yours? So, my fellow Americans already pisses me off. And the people who brought me the dance, Delawareans. Yay, pack mentality for an arbitrary political designation. I see my buddy, Tom, Senator Tom Carper down there, and I think, I think Senator Coons is there, and I think the governor's around. And... Yay, all sorts of parasites to praise. Is that Ruth Ann? And that former Governor Ruth Ann Minner. Most importantly, my sister's in law, my sister Valerie. Anyway. Pretend to be one of us. Yay, you're not. You're a parasite. <laughs> Folks, the people of this nation have spoken. Bullshit. The ruling class gave you two crooks to choose from, and if you played the game, you legitimized the game and made it so they can pretend that the people have spoken. The people spoke. Nobody likes this piece of shit. The only reason he was voted in is because they like the other piece of shit even less. This has nothing to do with the will of the people. In no case would anybody say, you know who I want running my life? Joe Biden. Nobody in the world wants that. Just like nobody in the world wanted Donald Trump. This is not the will of the people, and I can't believe anybody still falls for that crap. This is the will of the ruling class. They give you two choices. It doesn't matter which one you do because they're both puppets of the state. So, sorry, <laughs> carrying on. They've delivered us a clear victory, a convincing victory, a victory. And by the way, in case anybody didn't know it, nobody voted for this guy, they voted against Trump. Nobody likes this demented piece of shit. It's just enough people were scared of Trump being an unstable psychopath, which this guy is soon, and they'll, too, and they'll soon learn that. Um, there was no excitement for this guy. And when people point out, where were all the Biden signs? There weren't any because the people voting for him weren't voting for him. They were voting against that psycho Trump. And the, most of the people voting for Trump were voting against this psycho. There is a tiny fraction of the population that's actually rah, rah, rah for Trump because they're delusional bootlicking twerps. Pretty much nobody is rah, rah, rah for Biden except that he isn't Trump which you can tell from the fact that his entire campaign was, I'm not Trump. That was literally his only campaign point. For 
We the people, we've won with the most votes ever cast on presidential ticket in the history of the nation. We the people is still bullshit, but they already explained why, so carry on. 74 million. Oh, and by the way, this is what I said was going to happen. They, people had, were, before Trump, people were getting bored of elections and politics, and they're like, ah, they're all limey, slimy, you know, lying, slimy crooks, and we don't believe any of them. They had to make it into professional wrestling by bringing in Trump to make it so outrageous that people would pay attention and would vote, not because they're all excited about some positive message, because politics never is a positive message, um, but because they're scared shitless of one of them getting in. So the record voter turnout, the, the ruling class wanted it to happen because then they could say, see, the people participated and this is the will of the people. And no, it isn't. It was literally a contest to see which of two psychos people hated more. And Trump just barely seems to have won the contest of who did they hate more among the two worst people in the world. So Biden, according to the American people, was only the second worst person on the planet and now he's going to be president. So the, the record voter turnout, for those of you who are anarchists and voluntarists, don't think that means everybody fell for it again. Almost all of the votes on both sides were literally just terrified of the other side. Anybody but him, we can't let him in. It's the same thing with Trump versus Hillary. Is they did that race to scare people into getting involved by voting defensively, which doesn't stinking work. Look who you ended up with, and look who you ended up with last time. Um, anyway, that's another rant, but carrying on. What I must admit has surprised me. Tonight, we're seeing all over this nation, all cities and all parts of the country, indeed across the world, an outpouring of joy, of hope, renewed faith, and tomorrow, bring a better day. Kind of right. It's just relief from having the last psycho out of power because they haven't had experience with this psycho enough to realize he's just as bad. And I'm humbled by the trust and confidence you've placed in me. Nobody has trust or confidence in this dumbass. They're just scared of Trump. And they should be, by the way, because Trump's an evil piece of shit. But they should also be scared of this evil piece of shit. <laughs> Pardon my French. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify. There it is, the biggest bullshit line that they're gonna hammer into your head over and over again. You can't fucking unify by way of politics. Again, it's the exertion of the force of law. You cannot unify people by violently dominating them. Somebody gets taxed, somebody gets regulated, somebody gets controlled. You can't pretend, uh, it's like if I walk into a room and say, I'm going to unify everybody in this room by picking some of you to rob and violently dominate and giving what I steal to the other ones. That is what they're pretending can unify people. It's bullshit. Who doesn't see red states and blue states only sees the United States. And work with all my heart with the confidence of the whole people to win the confidence of all of you. And for that is what America, I believe, is about. This dipshit is going to get paid with stolen money, stolen from all of you, and he's telling you he's there to represent you, and people still believe the shit. It's about people. And that's what our administration will be all about. Ah, oh, you're about people. Uh, so not the aardvarks and armadillos, about people. Okay, I'm glad we're focused on that particular species. What meaningless shit. We're about people. And no, you're not. You're about the violent domination of people because that's what government does. That's what every government policy is. It's what every tax, every regulation is. It's a threat of violence against the people. So when they still pretend, I'm here for the people, it's, it's a carjacker telling his victims, I'm here for you. Now give me your keys. Just idiotic that anybody falls for this. I sought this office to restore the soul of America. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> you saw this office because you were a power-happy asshole, just like the last person who was there. Um, the, anyway, I'll we'll keep going. <laughs> Otherwise, this will take forever. I'm only two minutes into this atrocity. To rebuild the backbone of this nation. That doesn't mean anything. Literally, he's making noise. Rebuild the backbone of the nation. You are literally an economic parasite. 
You steal wealth from productive people and waste it on corrupt bullshit. The people who actually build stuff do it through voluntary trade. People say, I want a this. I will buy a this from you if you make a that. Politicians don't do that. They are literally economic parasites. So building the backbone, it's more words that just doesn't mean anything. The middle class. And to make America respected. Ah, the middle class. I said some words. Yeah. I don't want this to become an entire economics lesson. If all somebody does is boss you around and steal your money, they cannot help the economy. The best they can do is literally nothing. It's like, again, it's like saying a carjacker helped the economy. By doing what? All he can do is forcibly interfere with the voluntary economy. The idea that government and Trumpites were just as stupid. He helped the economy. No, he's thinking didn't. You can't help the economy by way of initiating violence against the people. And that's all politics is. Anyway, carrying on. Around the world again. And to unite us here at home. It's the honor of my lifetime that so many millions of Americans have voted for that vision. Nobody voted for your vision. Your vision is incoherent bullshit. They just voted against Trump. And now the work of making that vision is real. And by the way, Trumpites, you made this happen. You made this jackass piece of shit, perverted, whatever else you want to add to that. You made him get to the throne by running somebody so obnoxious and ridiculously fascist and incoherent that people voted for this guy instead just to get that guy out. You did that by falling for their game. And I said this way before it even happened. They're going to do this because what they do is send the pendulum back and forth. Left, right, left, right. Because there is no left, right. It's the one ruling class sending alternating puppets out to make you think you have a choice. And when you go, oh, that one's really bad, let's do this one, it's just marching ahead. So the Trumpites, you put this guy into power by running Trump against him. And if Trump had won, the dumbasses who supported him would have put Trump into power, because that's the game they keep playing, and people keep doing the, I'm going to vote for the lesser of two evils, and the evils get worse and worse, and you don't stink and notice, and you still do it thinking it's going to turn out well. Did it turn out well? It's a task, the task of our time. Folks, as I said many times before, I'm Jill's husband. Glad you remember and that. I would not be here without her love and tireless support of Jill. Is this how you hurt human? Stop pretending to be human, you psycho. And my son, Hunter, and Ashley, my daughter, and all our grandchildren and their spouses, and all our family. They're my heart. <laughs> what is anybody cheering for? She's I have relatives. I'm an educator. Good for you. She has dedicated her life to education, but teaching isn't just what she does, it's who she is. For American educators, this is a great day for y'all. You're gonna have to in the White House. Literally meaningless noise. Jim's gonna make a great first lady. I'm so proud of her. By the way, for those of you who make fun of the British royalty, this is what royalty looks like. Oh my gosh, the first lady. What the hell is she? Like, I don't care who she is. She doesn't even, it, she's, she's treated like a queen. She doesn't do anything. Even if you believe in the legal system, first lady doesn't do a damn thing. So when people go, oh, and, and fawn all over her, that's exactly as ridiculous as the people in England who still, still think the queen is anything other than a giant bloated parasite. Well, I'll have the honor of serving with the fantastic vice president you just heard from Kamala Harris. Yay, because if we get an authoritarian, power-happy, evil, corrupt, psychotic black woman in power, then we should all be happy about it. Because as long as it's not a white guy, oppression's great. Like Mao, he's okay, because he's not white. You know, he killed more people than anyone else in history. Hitler and Stalin are bad, because they're white. I guess Stalin counts as white. European. But uh, yeah, as long as, as long as you get the right color person victimizing you, then you should be happy and thrilled about it. The right color or the right gender. Sorry, the word is sex. Everybody does that wrong. 
Random pet peeve. Gender is for words, not people. Sex is for people. Who makes history as the first woman, first black woman, the first woman from South Asian descent, the first daughter of an immigrant ever elected in this country. This is literally as stupid as saying, oh my God, I got carjacked by a black woman. Yes. Why are you happy about that? It doesn't matter what color they are and what genitals they have. She is a professional parasite. Her career has been a professional parasite, mostly victimizing black people. And if you think it's great that a victimizer of black people is in power because she's black or female, you're a gullible idiot. Stop falling for that shit. Holy crap. And by the way, I say the same thing to, to white people who are like, yeah, I'm all excited about this guy and I complain about Obama being black. Having a jackass who's the same color as you oppressing you is not better or worse as having a jackass of a different color who's oppressing you. But people fall for this stupid thing. Oh, one of us is in power. Good for you. You've got a black slave owner. Don't tell me it's not possible in the United States. It's long overdue. And we're reminded tonight of those who fought so hard for so many years to make this happen. But once again, America's bent the arc of the moral universe more toward justice. Kamala, don't. Are you fucking kidding me? If you don't know Kamala Harris's history and the things she supported, look it up. You won't be going, rah, 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 she's a black woman. You'll be going, holy shit, she's a fascist. Like it or not, your family, you become an honorary Biden, there's no way out. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> it's a friggin' Joker smile. <laughs> Stop smiling, you creepy psycho. Those of you volunteered and worked the polls in the middle of this pandemic, local elected officials, you deserve a special thanks from the entire nation. And to my campaign team and all the volunteers and all who gave so much of themselves to make this moment possible, I owe you, I owe you, I owe you everything. Now you owe Trump everything. People voted for you because they were scared of that psycho. Um, I'm sure he's gonna do fear mongering about the friggin' COVID bullshit, but I'm going to try to let this just play so this video isn't eight hours long. And all those who supported us, I'm proud of the campaign we built and ran. I'm proud of the coalition we put together, the broadest and most diverse coalition in history. Democrats, Republicans, independents, progressives, moderates, conservatives, young, old, urban, suburban, rural, gay, straight, transgender, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, and literally the only thing they had in common was recognizing that Trump is a psycho. <laughs> and then they put a new psycho on the throne. I mean it, especially those moments, and especially those moments where this campaign was at its lowest ebb. The African-American community stood up again for me. You always have my back, and I'll have yours. Look up the history of what this evil piece of shit supported. He's not even a leftist. I mean, leftists are their own bullshit. Uh, never mind, I'm not gonna get into the whole history. Look it up. The, for black people to be, it's black people cheering for a new old white slave owner who abused them. And like, I can totally sympathize that you wanted to be rid of Trump, but you just got the same freaking thing with slightly different rhetoric. I said at the outset. And you know how tempted I am to leak parts of the script of the Jones Plantation, which exactly match the ridiculous spectacle we're seeing? Anyway. I wanted to represent this campaign to represent and look like America. We've done that. Now that's what I want the administration to look like and act like. For all those of you who voted for President Trump, I understand the disappointment tonight. I've lost a couple times myself. But now, let's give each other a chance. Meaningless noise. Notice the rhetoric about the, uh, the representing the people is when you're exerting the violence of law, 
the only way you can represent anyone is by exerting force against somebody else. In other words, you use that violence to the benefit of this group at, to the detriment of some other group. There isn't another way to use force. If you're giving this group something from tax dollars, it's because you stole it from this group over here. If you're benefiting this group, then you're hurting this group if you're using force. The way that's not true is in voluntary interaction when you don't have to take it from anybody. But when you're talking about violence, which is what government is, the, the representing is utter bullshit because it's, I'm gonna benefit you at the expense of him. That's all politics ever is. And when people go, yeah, they're bringing us together. No, they're stinking not. It's time to put away the harsh rhetoric, lower the temperature, see each other again, listen to each other again. And then violently dominate each other again. Oh, by the way, I guarantee you he's going to mention plans and policies and agendas that will be euphemisms for exerting violence against you right after saying, we need to all come together and unite and listen to each other. And here are the ways in which I plan to violently dominate and rob you. And to make progress, we have to stop treating our opponents as our enemies. They are not our enemies. They are Americans. They are Americans. They're not our enemies, but we're going to exhort, exert the violence of law against all of them. Alrighty then. Then people fall for this shit. The Bible tells us to everything there is a season, a time to build, a time to reap, and a time to sow, and a time to heal. This is the time to heal in America. Again, this is rhetoric that literally doesn't mean anything. Now this campaign is over, what is the will of the people? Again, they're pretending it's the will of the people. The ruling class gave you two crooks to choose from. Which of these do you want overseeing your own subjugation and victimization? And we're going to pretend that's the will of the people. Uh, I can't believe anyone still falls for that shit. What is our mandate? I believe it's this. Your mandate was don't be Trump. Americans have called upon us to marshal the forces of decency, the forces of fairness, to marshal the forces of science, and the forces of hope. Incidentally, politicians used to even admit the reality. George Washington, government is not, what is it? It's not something, it's not eloquence, it is force. It's violence. The idea that government is about peace and getting along is just as stupid as thinking carjacking is about peace and getting along. In the great battles of our time, the battle to control the virus, the battle to build prosperity, the battle to secure your family's health care, the battle to achieve racial justice and root out systemic racism in this country. Coming from that guy, really? And the battle to save our planet by getting climate under control. Getting climate under control means using the violence of law to decide which businesses they're going to stop on and which they're going to allow to keep going, which will depend entirely upon which gives them more money. It has nothing to do with the environment. The battle restore decency, defend democracy, and give everybody in this country a fair shot. Decency is not initiating violence against your neighbors. Zero politicians are decent. Um, by the way, democracy sucks. Democracy is the majority violently imposing its will on the minority. That's all they're asking for, a fair shot. Doesn't, Folks, mean, doesn't mean anything. Our work begins with getting COVID under control. Now, he's in a position of government power. What control do you think he means? He means, and he's already said this before, he wants a federal mandate. Now, he's soon going to learn that the president can't do that. Federal government can't do such a thing. A mask mandate. That means a threat of violence against you. Remember, oh, we want to hear each other and get along. Every stinking thing the goddamn government at all levels has done about this ridiculously overblown COVID thing has been initiating violence and making things way worse. And for him to pretend this comes from compassion and for anyone to fall for that is just sickening. We cannot repair the economy, restore our vitality, 
or relish life's most precious moments, hugging our grandchildren, our children, our birthdays, weddings, graduation, all the moments that matter most to us until we get it under control. On Monday, I will name a group of leading scientists and experts as transition advisors to help take the Biden-Harris code plan and convert it into an action blueprint that will start on January the 20th, 2021. Federal government has no jurisdiction over any of that, and he's going to learn that <laughs> the hard way. He doesn't seem to even understand that. I mean, the feds already do a bunch of things that aren't under their jurisdiction, but this one is not going to fly. But again, he's talking about forcibly controlling you. He's not talking about informing you and making suggestions and helping out. He's talking about pushing threats of violence against you to tell you how to do things. And by the way, so far when government has done that about COVID and anything else, they make it worse. The government restrictions have already been way more deadly than this stupid virus. But that's, that's a whole other topic. That plan will be built on bedrock science. It will be constructed out of compassion. Bullshit. By the way, if you think science supports the masks or the shutdowns or the social distancing, you need to turn off your fucking TV and actually research the actual science. Masks make it worse. They are forcing people to make it worse. The CDC said masks make it worse until jackasses like this had their agenda where they wanted to do a power grab and then they said, no, now all of a sudden... What we've been saying for decades about masks make it worse. Now all of a sudden we were wrong about that. Now masks make it better. So much better, in fact, that we need to threaten you with violence if you don't wear one. This has nothing to do with compassion or science. Empathy and concern. Or empathy or concern. You lying shit. I will spare no effort, none, or any commitment to turn around this pandemic. Folks. There's one thing that turns around any contagion. It's called the human immune system. And government has been getting in the way of that and forcing things to do things, forcing people to do things that are a detriment to that. There is no way to use government violence to make this thing go away, even if it was actually statistically significant, which it isn't. Government violence is not the answer to it or anything, but he's pretending, I'm going to show my compassion by trying to make it so we can violently control your choices and make things worse. I'm a proud Democrat, but I will govern as an American president. I'll work as hard for those who didn't vote for me. What does anybody think it means when a politician says, I'm going to work for you? What do you think it looks, that looks like? He's going to mow your lawn, going to do a little weeding, maybe do some construction, maybe do some, you know, fix up your house a little bit. Work for you literally means I'm going to push for legislation that violently controls you. That's what it means. That's literally the only thing politicians do is right and send out threats of violence, and they call that working for you, and people still fall for that shit. As those who did, let this grim era of demonization in America begin to end here and now. Such bullshit, since literally every politician lives off of fear and demonization because they have to do the divide and conquer thing. And then they pretend, I'm bringing you together while doing the divide and conquer thing. The refusal of Democrats and Republicans to cooperate with one another, it's not some mysterious force beyond our control. It's a decision, a choice we make. And if we can decide not to cooperate, then we can decide to cooperate. I don't want Republicans and Democrats cooperating because what they're cooperating to do is violently rob and dominate the rest of us. zippity doo -dah. And I believe that this is part of the mandate given to us from the American people. They want us to cooperate. There's no mandate. It was literally to get rid of Trump and nothing else. In their interest. And that's the choice I'll make. And I'll call on Congress. Democrats and Republicans alike to make that choice with me. The American story 
is about slow yet steadily widening the opportunities in America. And make no mistake. You can't widen opportunities through the use of government violence. And that's all they do. Literally all government does is limit opportunities by stealing your money and forcibly controlling your choices. Too many dreams have been deferred for too long. We must make the promise of the country real for everybody, no matter their race, their ethnicity, their faith, their identity. Meaningless shit. Keep in mind this guy is going to oversee a ruling class that robs all the people, regardless of race, race and ethnicity and nationality. Uh, it's like a carjacker bragging about his victims being diverse. Or their disability. I even steal cars from cripples. <laughs> Good Lord, why can't people see through this? Folks, America has always been shaped by inflection points, by moments in time where we've made hard decisions about who we are. These words don't mean anything. Do any of you notice that these words literally don't mean anything? Like, this sounds fluffy and kind of positive without actually saying anything. And what we want to be. I want to be free, you piece of shit. Lincoln, in 1860. To those of you who don't know real history, Lincoln was the worst tyrant in history. He was also just a drastic racist and nasty as hell. But he, he was the worst tyrant in American history. Um, if you haven't seen It Can't Happen Here, look it up. The, the documentary I did. Because when people praise Lincoln, it's because they have no idea what he was and what he did. He's, he was just a horrendously evil tyrant. And no, he didn't emancipate anyone. He did, when he freed the slaves, he freed the slaves in unoccupied, uncontrolled territory exactly the same way King George did. It was a military tactic. It had nothing to do with principles, which is why Lincoln said, if I could preserve the Union without, saving a sing without freeing a single slave, I would. Were you taught that in school? Look it up. Coming to save the Union. FDR in 1932, promising a beleaguered country, a new deal. New deal involving massive amounts of violent extortion of the people and then socialist handouts. And they call it a new deal. It wasn't a... Uh, JFK, in 1960, pledging a new frontier. And 12 years ago, when Barack Obama made history, he told us, yes, we can. Yes, we can. And people thought that meant something. Yes, we can what? We didn't do anything. He oversaw the extortion and domination of several hundred million people, including me. We didn't do anything. Yes, we can. It's such drivel. It's yes, we can and make America great again are about on the same level when it comes to completely meaningless drivel and people fall for it and go rah, rah, rah because they can imagine into that whatever they actually believe in. He means we can all be whatever I want. No, he doesn't. He means, ah, I just got into a position of power where I can be one of the people who robs and controls you. Yay, and then I'll talk about representing you. Ah, we're almost through this thing. <laughs> Holy crap. We stand at an inflection point. We have an opportunity to defeat despair, to build a nation of prosperity and purpose. We can do it, I know we can. Anybody out there who's going rah, rah, rah for this, take that last sentence and write out what it meant. See if you can actually put that into words that convey something other than good, happy, positive stuff. It doesn't mean anything. I've long talked about the battle for the soul of America. We must restore the soul of America. Our nation is shaped by the constant battle between our better angels and our darkest impulses. Our better angels advocate voluntary, nonviolent interactions with other human beings. Government is foundationally and inherently evil because what it is, is the initiation of violence. That's all it is, that's all it does. So for one of these parasites, left, right, I don't care, to talk about 
this is a battle of good versus evil. Yeah, it is. And you are on the side of evil because political power is inherently immoral and destructive and in, in evil regardless of who wields it. So when he pretends, we're on the side of good while I rob you and control you, um, no, go fuck yourself. And what presidents say in this battle matters. It's time for our better angels to prevail. Tonight, the whole world is watching America. And I believe at our best, America is a beacon for the globe. We will not lead, we will lead not only by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. Yay, meaningless bullshit. Have you noticed that literally any empire in the world at any time in history could have given this exact bullshit speech? He's not saying anything. There's literally no meaning and no substance to it. We're great and we're awesome in our goodness and we're great and rah, 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 and can we be all happy about the accident of birth of the territorial jurisdiction we happen to have been born into or moved into? You're being proud that you are under the territory that is controlled by a particular ruling class. That's what nationalism is. That's what patriotism is. And they want you to go rah, rah, rah about it instead of actually having a principle and say, how about freedom? I mean, once upon a time we pretended that America was about freedom. It isn't. It never was. But that was the rhetoric, and that's the propaganda. And now the propaganda isn't even that specific. It's more vague and to the point of meaning nothing. Many of you heard me say it. I've always believed we can define America in one word. Possibilities. Again, all government does is reduce possibilities by using the threat of violence to take your money and limit your choices. Any candidate who pretends that he's for possibilities is either an imbecile or a liar or both. That in America. Everyone should be given an opportunity to go as far as their dreams and God-given ability will take them. While government steals a massive amount of what you produce and writes so many laws that you literally don't even know what's legal and what isn't, and you can't do anything without government permission. You see, I believe in the possibilities of this, of this country. Well, I believe in the possibility that you're demented and you're going to be incoherent in a matter of weeks. Always looking ahead. Ahead to an America that's freer and more just. Ahead to an America that creates jobs with dignity and respect. Freedom's been going downhill for a very long time. Ahead of America that cures diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's. Ahead to an America that never... Because they just throw shit out. And the weather will be better. And, like, you don't cure anything. Like, people make advances and they figure stuff out. You're the group that violently robs and dominates people. You don't get credit for these things. And Trump did the same thing. Under my administration, we'll magically find cures for stuff. Like, how are you going to do that? By writing laws that threaten people. Like, that's not really how progress works. So they all do this ridiculous thing, trying to take credit for the results of voluntary interaction and trade, when all they are is involuntary interaction. Leaves anyone behind. Ahead of America that never gives up, never gives in. Meaningless drivel. This is a great nation. It's always been a bad bet to bet against America. We're good people. This is the United States of America. Lots of us are good people. He's not, and Trump is not. Because one of the measures of whether you're a good person is whether you condone or commit violent aggression against nonviolent people. And every fucking politician does. It is impossible to wield that power and be a moral human being. Just like it's impossible to be a moral carjacker. If you are using that violence, that makes you a bad person. Calling it legal and law and the will of the people doesn't change that. Lots of Americans are good people and they interact voluntarily and they try to treat people with respect and not violate other people's consents. Zero politicians, none of them, acknowledge and accept and honor the consent of other people. Absolutely all of them violate that consent. There's never been anything 
And incidentally, he's displayed how often he violates the consent of little kids by doing his creepy sniffing thing when they're like wiggling to get away. And he, as, as much as that may seem disconnected with, well, that, you know, he's just sort of weird in that way. But politically, I really, it's a demonstration of what is true of all politicians. They don't give a shit about your consent. They gravitated towards position of power precisely so they could control you without your consent. That is all government ever is. Which is why the phrase consent of the governed is insane and idiotic. It is literally meaningless. Never been anything we've been able, not able to do when we've done it together. Meaningless shit. Working together. We're not working together. You're threatening violence against lots of people who would actually work together if you didn't. Folks, in the last days of the campaign, I began thinking about a hymn that means a lot to me and my family, particularly my deceased son, Bo. It captures the faith that sustains me, and which I believe sustains America. Meaningless shit. None of this is saying anything about what government actually does. It, it's literally like a carjacker saying all these nice things about... I believe in people coming together and blah, blah, blah. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to steal your car by pointing a gun in your face. But I'm not going to say that part because that's not going to make you go rah, rah, rah. I'm going to say together and hope and possibilities and blah, blah, blah. And hope you'll be too stupid to notice that what I'm actually advocating is your subjugation and extortion. And I hope, and I hope it can provide some comfort and solace to 230 million thousand Americans We've lost 230 million thousand. <laughs> That's a lot. Lost a loved one through this terrible virus. No, they fucking didn't. But that's a different topic for a different video. The numbers they're giving of deaths are, if anyone still believes them, after they admitted how they fake the numbers, it's just, it's ridiculous. <sighs> but that's a different topic. This year, my heart goes out to each and every one of you including the one who died of COVID after crashing his motorcycle, which was an interesting accomplishment. Hopefully this hymn gives you solace as well. Good Lord. It goes like this. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, and make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. And now together. What exactly was the relevance of that to government Forcing, forcibly taking your money and controlling you and limiting your options. Oh, nothing! On Eagle's wings, we embark on the work that God and history have called upon us to do. What violent aggression has God called upon you to do? Exactly who did God tell you to threaten with violence or caging or extortion to demand their money to spend it on something they wouldn't have spent it on voluntarily. When did God tell you to do that? I'd love to see that, uh, that verse in the Bible. And God said, go out and rob your fellow man. Let's, let's go Jesus in particular, since he didn't really seem that inclined to say, go initiate violence against your fellow man. When these power happy pieces of shit claim God is on their side and Trump did the same thing, it's just freaking sickening. With full hearts and steady hands. Oh, by the way, if you condemn Muslims for, oh, they believe in using the state to forcibly control people, but you cheer for this shit, you're an absolute freaking hypocrite. If you believe in a God that supports the violent domination of mankind, your God is shit. With faith in America and in each other, with faith in America and each other, which doesn't mean anything. Love of country, a thirst for justice. Let us be the nation that we know we can be. Thirst for justice while you literally oversee the violent subjugation of uh, 300 million people. A nation united, a nation strengthened, a nation healed. The United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, there's never, never been anything we've tried we've not been able to do. So now it's not only just meaningless dribble, it's just utterly false. Remember, as my grandpa, our grandpa used to say when I walked out of his home, when I was a kid up in Scranton, he said, Joey, keep the faith. And our grandmother, when she was alive, she yelled, no, Joey, spread it. 
Spread the faith. God love you all. May God bless America and may God protect our church. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Literally didn't say anything of substance. Didn't say anything about the literal reality of what every administration does, what every government does, of what every political agenda actually is. Nothing but meaningless fluff, and that's, that's all he has. Meaningless fluff plus I'm not Trump. That's the only reason anybody voted for him. And that's the only reason he's there. And I hope, I think a lot more people are watching this crap and realizing he didn't say anything. There was no substance to that. There was no meaning to that. It was just, in fact, compared to the other tyrants in history, Hitler and Stalin and Mao, if you look at their sales pitches to their people and their speeches, they were way more impressive and way more persuasive than this empty bullshit and the empty bullshit of the Republicans that has no principles. Those tyrants had crappy principles and crappy ideas, but at least they could sort of say something about what they were trying to do. He didn't say anything about anything. And so for people to go rah, rah, rah about this, I mean, I can understand people going, yay, Trump isn't there. And soon, if you're at all aware of anything around you, you're gonna be go going, oh my God, okay, a new set of psychotic crooks doing evil shit. Now, I don't want to end on a bummer, so I will say this. Right now, I see more people questioning authoritarianism than ever before. Tons of people, and I've heard this from a lot of voluntarists and anarchists, a bunch of statists are coming to them and saying, remember when we were talking about something, they're suddenly noticing the circus has gotten so frickin' ridiculous that they couldn't not notice how insane and pointless and evil it is. This is, so as much as I'm bashing this moron and the people going rah, rah, rah for him, this is a, a, this is a time of possibilities because tons of people are giving up the superstition of authority and figuring out that humanity is not supposed to be bowing to power happy psychopaths. We're supposed to be free. And so don't, don't get disheartened because, and you know, some people who are pro-freedom are like, ah, oh, it's the end of the world, Biden won. It's not the end of the world. It wasn't the end of the world when Obama won or Clinton or Bush or Trump or the stupid machine lumbers on. What matters is not the jackass on the throne. It's how many people outgrow the belief in the throne to the point where this sort of crap will be nothing but a few demented old lunatics in the corner saying, we're in charge, and everybody else going, I oh, don't mind them, they're just kind of mentally imbalanced, and then ignoring them out of existence. So that is the possibility I look forward to, and we will get there in spite of dumbasses like this and the people who still get excited about this meaningless shit. So have a nice day, get out there, and keep freeing hearts and minds.